rice. This is the real deal. So good. excited today because I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to cook one of our recipes in our new cookbook, The Walks of Life, Recipes to Know and Love from a Chinese American Family. That's us. So uh, uh, today, ta -da, it's a uh, Cantonese roast duck. Uh, if you've ever been in Chinatown, you see them hanging uh, in clear glass windows and the guy chopping the, the ducks in front of the window. You'll know what they are and you can smell them a mile away. And now you're going to be able to cook it from home. A Cantonese roast duck is different because than what most people think it is. Some people think it's a Peking duck, I'm going to get crispy skin, but Peking duck's all in a, 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 different, a different kind of duck. It's, it's all about the skin, it's all about the crispiness, roasted on a wood oven stove. And this Cantonese duck is super fragrant and super delicious, but it doesn't have crispy skin. And I promise you, if you know that ahead of time, you won't be disappointed. You'll be very delighted. When you're preparing this Cantonese duck, uh, there's, there's actually a few steps to it. There's the dry rub, there's the wet rub, and then there's the preparation of the skin and the roasting, which involves, yes, blowing up the, the skin and separating the skin from the rest of the duck so that the, uh, the fat can render properly and, and, and the fat actually base the duck while it's roasting. All these spices, and aromatics are fairly easy to find. You can get them in any well-stocked grocery store, Chinese grocery store. A buddy of mine who actually recipe tested for us had no issues finding it. This, uh, this implement is basically an uh, electric air pump right, that, that you use. And, we, and I bought this. It cost about 10 bucks, 12 bucks. It's dedicated for, for doing things like this, for food, actually. So um, we also have some metal skewers. So uh, I'll show you how the technique on how to, how to skewer the duck and close it up because everything has to be closed up when we pump the duck full of air to separate the skin from the cavity. And what happens is that, that allows the fat to render and base the duck inside while all the aromatics are bubbling inside and cooking and, and all that deliciousness comes out. As I said before, this is a headless duck, and the duck is a little bit easier to seal when you have a head because you just have the neck. But I'll show you how to do it uh, with a headless duck. So let me go over the duck, what, what, I, what I did to prep the duck. I washed it pretty thoroughly, and of course, you know, whenever you do that, you just got to watch your sanitary. People don't like, say they don't like washing poultry, but, you know, if you're careful about it, you're fine. Um, and what I did was, in the cavity, I, I uh, washed and and took out the organs. There's actually two kidneys at the bottom of the organ, uh, uh, at the duck that the, that the butcher doesn't take out. And the giblets inside, the duck liver and the neck is inside. We, we took that out and actually I'm uh, boiling that up for barley right now. Um, you can see a very large flap of skin here at the top of the, of the duck. And you know, this one looks like it's a little bit cut, cut and mangled. Um, so we're going to have to kind of sew around that or skewer around that to get an airtight seal. There's usually a lot of fat around the bottom of the duck, so you have to take that fat out. Also, with this duck, is came with the feet cutoffs. When you get a duck at, in Chinatown, a full duck, size duck, a lot of times you'll get the feet uh, with the, with, attached to the duck, and you just uh, cut them off at the joints, making sure that you don't uh, shortchange the skin here, right? You got you got to pull the pull that duck tight, taut, and then cut it at the joint. And make sure uh, this the skin is not broken around this joint. Restaurants will cut off the uh, entire wing and leave just the drumette uh, for roasting, but I actually just cut off the tip instead and left the wing here because restaurants actually have dishes that they can use the whole wings for, and 
we don't, we're not going to do that. Make sure you also start with a cold duck because the cold duck is going to be firm and it's going to be easier to seal. Otherwise, if your duck is warmed up, the fat is going to be soft and it's going to be actually hard to seal and it might rip. So let's get to it. First step we're going to do is uh, dry rub the duck and then we're going to refrigerate it. And while we're refrigerating it, we'll cook the cooked marinade uh, on the stove and put that in and then seal the duck up. But I've put together this, uh, this dry rub from the recipe, from the book already. And it's two tablespoons, there's two tablespoons of chassing wine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it in. I'm going to rub it all inside the cavity. Get a bit of that. Kind of rub it up and down. Roll it around a little bit. Everything. Okay. So, all coated. Only on the inside. Very important. I'm going to pour some of this marinade in. Not marinade, it's a dry rub. And just rub it all inside. Make sure you get it all over, especially on the breast side. Do your best not to get a, anything on the outside of the skin. It's going to, quote unquote, stain the skin. I got that. You can put it in a little bit at a time, or you can just go for it and put it all. Yeah, why don't we do that? Pour it all. I'm just going to pour it in there. Turn it upside down, get the other side. And OK. We're good. That's the first step. We're going to put this in the refrigerator, keep it cool for about an hour. And during that time, we're going to cook our marinade on the stove and then let that cool. And then by that time, we're going to be ready to stuff the duck and seal it up. Okay, we've got our duck in the refrigerator. We've rubbed the inside and now we're going to make the marinade. So I'm just going to add a little bit of oil. Okay, some ginger. Let that, let that ginger infuse the oil. And then we're gonna add the, uh, the garlic. We're gonna add our aromatics. We can add them all at the same time, it's okay. So this is, this, these aromatics smell super. So you've got these aromatics You've got the spices dry rubbing, penetrating that duck, and then you've got this, this marinade that we're going to cook next. It's just an explosion of flavor. It's going to taste so good. I'm going to add this sauce mixture. Stir it in. So I'm going to get this, uh, we're going to let this come up to a simmer. And uh, once it simmers, then it's gonna, all the flavor is gonna come out of that sauce. It's just gonna start to uh, uh, cook. The cook sauce makes all the difference. Much different than if you put it in raw. Plus it also allows all the aromatics to infuse into the sauce. Everything becomes one, one flavor. And that's what we're looking for, the flavor of the Cantonese duck. I think this is ready and we're gonna let it cool. And we probably have another 20 minutes to wait uh, for the duck. And the reason why we refrigerate the duck is, A, uh, we want the duck skin uh, and the fat to be cold and firm. But we also want that marin the dry rub to actually s sort of uh, seep into the duck. So with the Shaoxing wine and, and the moisture of the duck, we want it to, uh, all that dry rub to, to go in and meld into that duck before we put this cooled uh, marinade in there and, and it's just a double whammy of flavor there. All right, we got a duck from the fridge. We've got the cooled marinade and then just pour it right in. You got to be careful not to stain the duck skin because you want that duck to be uniform brown. Scraping every drop here. Okay. 
All right. Spread it all around on the top. So we're going to get all the marinade in here. And, you know, I've been saying that don't get the, try your best not to get the marinade on the skin. But if you do, it's not, not, not the end of the world because we're going to give this, uh, the duck a, a little bit of a water bath. And that'll wash things off a bit. But, you know, just take a little care and uh, try not to get that done. Let me wash my hands and I'll come right back. So now we've got this done here, and now this is the tricky part. This is why, one of the reasons why I want to make this video, is that we've, we're going we're gonna to skewer this duck. And there's a specific way on how to skewer this duck to make sure it's sealed. If you skewer the duck and you just zigzag it, the stitch is not going to work. It's not going to be a tight seal. You have to do an over, under, over, under. So it's super important on how you actually close this duck up with the skewer. You got a pretty long skewer here. Um, and the way I'm going to do it right now is that from the tail up. So this is pretty, this is pretty uh, cut, o o cut open pretty, pretty badly. But uh, we just got to be patient about it. And this is why, again, I'll stress again that the duck has to be cold because otherwise the, the, the fat gets squishy and it's hard to handle. So what you're going to do at the, at the beginning over here, you're going, to, you're going to poke it through like that. And then you're going to go over, okay? And then go back under like that, about an inch or half an inch out, over, under, okay? And you're, you're using your other, your other finger to pinch the duct cavity together, over, under. Okay. You take your time with this. You might want to stick it out a little bit more, about an inch, over, under. And just work your way, over, under. And this gives you a, a much better seal. Because we're going to need a seal, we're actually going to inflate the duct. And uh, of course, you're not going to get a completely airtight seal, but you want, it, you want it as best as possible because, and I'll explain that later, but uh, we want that duck skin to separate from the, the duck body. So we're, we're almost there. Over, under. Over, well, push it through a little bit more. Over, under. Just like that, and then the last move, you're gonna you're gonna go over, and instead of coming out because now it's all sealed, you're gonna you know, stick this skewer. You see this part over here? You're gonna stick it all the way in and tighten it up, just like that. And you see the cam and then you got a little stitch here like that. That's why you want to get a, a skewer with decent length on it. Now we're going to turn over the duck and take a look at the uh, other side. So the other side has this big flap of skin. And we'll do the same thing where we're going to seal this guy up. We we'll use a skewer. Now you could actually, some people like to sew it up. So you can sew it up also. Uh, but just make sure that, uh, again, you, you try to get an airtight seal as possible. And I'm going to use, use the same method I use for the back and go in, over, under, in, over, under. And this is a little, you know, sometimes, sometimes you got to use two skewers to do this, but, you know, let's see if we can do it with one. Over, under. And you want these stitches to be kind of tight, actually, you know, because you do want a, a, a sort of a good seal on it. Over. All right, pushed it too, a little too far. Over, under. Okay. Now, I left this little hole here. So before finishing it, uh, I have this uh, 
I'll, I'll, I'm going to inflate it. So obviously I picked the wrong skewer. Eh, they're almost the same length. This is a long skewer. I should have used the shorter skewer. Now since I have the duck, I'm going to use this little hole here and we're going to blow up the duck. Uh, and, we'll, and we can start from this side first. So I'm going to turn this on, it's going to be a little noisy. And we got some air coming out of here. And now I'm going to put it in the skin flap and you see what's happening? The air, the skin is separating. Right, that's, that's what you want. You want to get that, that separation of the skin here. And you want to actually, what you want to do is you want to put your, your hands around this and make a tight seal. And then when you got a tight seal, you can massage it a little bit and that'll help. So you see how that's separated. Now we're going to turn this over, okay, and make sure that we get separation. Now what's important about the separation is that if you don't get total separation of the skin, it's not the end of the world, but you're not going to get a uniform roast. You'll get light spots where the skin hasn't separated because the moisture goes in and there's not enough uh, fat in between uh, that's basting it and roasting the skin. So you'll get spotty sections. You won't get that golden, uniform golden color. All right, so now we've turned over the duck and we're gonna blow it up again, but I just wanna make sure the skin is separating from uh, this side as well. So I'm gonna turn this guy on. Make sure there's a seal here. There we go. What happens if you don't do this? If you don't do it, you're not going to get an even colors, but it's not going to be, you know. But it'll still be good. It'll still taste good. Okay. So. Slackers, here. Take note. So sometimes these this duck, these ducks, the the skin is stuck to the stuck to the membrane. Uh, for whatever reason, I think maybe because it's been frozen for a long time um, and, uh, and, and you have to work your finger in here, just the air is not going to do it as you, could, as you saw before. And I'll show you, and look at that, I, I broke this actually. So, but it's okay, it's not the end of the world. Um, We sprung a leak here. So this part over here is not separating. But you know, you do your best to do what you can. And this part probably might not brown right. But it's not the end of the world. Oh, there we go. I guess I didn't... I didn't have the... I didn't have it sealed. Like a balloon, isn't it? That's pretty cool, huh? It's a it's a bit of a hassle, but uh, uh, I trust trust me, it's worth it. No, it's the separation mostly. Some of the air will be in the duck, but uh, I think I think what it is is that I I didn't get this. Uh, like uh, let me let me do another over under here. Let me 
Okay. So you might have to do this a couple of times. Now you can see why I wanted to show this on a video because it, uh, sometimes you can encounter difficulties. Let me turn over the duck and see what it looks like. There we go. You gotta do this a couple of times. So, you know, let the, let the skin rest. And what I'm doing is I'm using my thumb here to plug up the hole that I made. So, pretty good. We're getting decent separation here. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries. Some ducks are hard. This has been frozen for a long time. Okay, so okay, we, we, separate, we blew the duck up and we separated the skin and now we're just going to finish the seal over here. And hopefully you have a smaller skewer. I actually used a larger, a slightly larger skewer, so this is going to be a little bit awkward, but you know, it'll be fine. Can you use a bamboo skewer? Not really. A bamboo skewer you can use also, but it's, uh, it's probably not as as sealing if you will it won't be as sealed but here's a duck kind of ready to go into our next step which is uh giving the duck a a vinegar bath all right so what i've got here now is the duck it's blown up it's sealed and i turned it over put the duck up on a wire rack in the sheet pan so it's gonna raise up because what I'm gonna do is I've got some water boiling, four cups of water boiling, and we're gonna uh, blanch the skin. It's gonna shrink the skin. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my uh, um, red vinegar and maltose and salt, and then make the bath for the, uh, for the duck that gives it that rich brown color. So the water's boiling now. So I'm gonna take this and pour little bits of it and watch the skin. You see that shrinking, that skin's shrinking. Tightens everything up. Let's see if you can see that over this uh, drumstick. And you see that shrink, all the fat tightens right up. So if you, if you see any uh, little feathers, you could pull them off. Take this now. I'm going to turn it over. And we're going to do the same thing here. Turn this off. Pour the last bit of that over here. Tighten up all that skin. Okay. Now, in the Chinese restaurants, you wouldn't think that they did this, right? They, they put hooks on each one, under each one of these arms and they hang it up and then they have this big vat of boiling water and they just dip it in and the whole thing gets shrunk at once and it's a very fast process. They basically dip it and hang it, dip it and hang it, and it's constantly boiling water and it's a, it's a process. So now we're going to prepare the uh, vinegar bath and I'm going to pour this water out after it cools. I'm gonna boil the water here and I'm gonna add the maltose. Yes, this is, this is the maltose. That's why it has that nice sticky property to it. Let that melt in there. Just gonna use my fingers here. There we go. A little salt. Maltose is basically a, 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 a kind of a, a barley or a, a grain. It's a grain uh, sugar. You, I suppose you could use honey for it, but this, the maltose has that stiff property. You know, honey, honey kind of remains liquidy. Maltose hardens like candy, actually, uh, which, is why, which is why we use it. And then we're gonna add our, uh, 
our vinegar. All right, stir that around. Let that come to a boil. Let all the salt dissolve. Our duck is in waiting over here. And we're just gonna coat this. And after we coat this, this is the back. After we coat this, turn it over, coat the other side. Just do the same thing here. Make sure you, we, get, we get underneath the wings because if you don't get underneath the wings, you're not gonna get uniform color. So make sure that you get an even coating of everything. Any spots, trust me, that you, don't, that you miss are not gonna be, have that nice golden brown color. This is a painstaking process. It's, it's a lot of work. Like I said to you, it's gonna be worth it, but we do wanna get it right. And just kind of pour this back in just like that. Not too difficult. Just gotta be careful. It's okay if you don't get all of it. Okay, bring it up to a boil again. It's boiled up again, I'm gonna get this again. And you all, all you folks might be like a little bit uh, scared about this process. And you know, the first few times I did it, I, uh, I did it over a wok, I tried to dip, I tried to dip the whole uh, duck into the wok and it was very awkward and I found that this method is best and it's actually not that bad, you see. It's, uh, but it, you know, it is, it is a lot of work, but it is totally, totally worth it. Trust me on that. And turn it over one more time. Make sure I get the wings. You see it's already starting to take this light pinkish tint and that's going to turn brown in the oven. I'm just going to pour the rest of it on here. All right, the duck is ready. I'm just going to pour this uh, liquid off. And take this rack off. Pour all the liquid off. And store this breast side down. Just like that. So now we're gonna let this duck sit for about 30 minutes outside, let it cool off a little bit. And then we're gonna store it inside the fridge uncovered. Uh, to let it dry out, actually. And what uh, you'll see, a lot of these restaurants, may maybe if you've seen, you know, peered in the back, in the back door in the kitchen, you'll see ducks hanging from a rack. That's what they're doing. They're letting it dry out uh, uh, for roasting the next day. And we're going to do the same. Hi everyone, very exciting day, second day of the roast duck. So we have dry rubbed the roast duck, put in the cooked marinade, and we stitched it up. We've blown it up, separated the skin, and refrigerated it breast side down, if you remember. And the directions in the book say that you're supposed to turn it over, breast side up, and leave it out for at least two hours. So I left it about two, three hours right now and it's come up to room temperature. And I'm, well, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to set up your roasting rack. And what we've done is, uh, I'm gonna set this aside for a moment. And I recommend this roasting rack here. It's a V roasting rack, you know, it has one of these that you can set up. And the reason why I do that, it elevates the duck and it, actually makes the minimal amount of markings on the duck. So uh, if you all notice uh, in, the, in Chinatown, they have these r roasting ovens. They're hanging, the ducks are hanging. So they actually get, they hang in the oven when they're roasting as well. So they have no marks on them, the fat renders down. But at home, we kind of tough to do that. So we're gonna uh, get a roasting rack. You can get a flat roasting rack too, but this V roasting rack I find works, works really nicely. So I'm gonna show you how to set that up. I have a, uh, a piece of heavy-duty foil. 
and I put down. And this also minimizes the uh, cleanup time, actually it speeds cleanup time, but it also minimizes the, uh, the marks that you have on the duct. So I'm gonna set that up just like that, put, put this V-rack on, on the widest, if you will, uh, setting. We're gonna put the duct on the V-rack, breast side down for roasting. Breast side down, just like that. And then I'm gonna put this back on to the roasting rack. And that's how we're gonna roast it, just like that. And we have water, a little bit of water, so that all the fat drippings will drip into the onto the water and there won't be too much smoking. And that's exactly what the Chinese restaurants do when they hang the ducks in the roasting oven to roast. There's a, a big uh, pan of water and, and the fat drips down there so it doesn't drip directly onto a hot pan and uh, cause a lot of smoke. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we've got an oven preheated for, at 350 degrees. We're gonna roast it for 25 minutes. We're gonna rotate the pan make sure for even roasting another 25 minutes then we're going to take it out we're going to use some heat proof gloves and we're going to turn it over and we're going to roast it another 20 minutes and we're going to rotate it again 20 minutes it's a total of about an hour and a half at 350 degrees and then she's going to be ready to go all right here it goes in the oven i'm just going to put it in the middle part of the oven the upper third i guess they'll call it of the oven we're gonna start our timer. So remember when we put uh, water in the pan, halfway through, at some point, your, all your water is gonna evaporate and it's gonna start splattering or maybe it's gonna start smoking. So what you wanna do is add hot water to the pan and that'll prevent it from happening, okay? Just to do this. That's it. Just another caution. When you're taking it out, just be careful that the oil and the water sloshing around, be super careful. All right, that's it. That looks good. Woohoo, it's sizzling. It's got a lot of color. And let's take this out to flip it. Oh yeah. Gotta work fast. So I still got my mitts on. I put it on a space here, stable to work on. What I found is the best way to do this is just to use your mitts, or if you've got heat proof gloves, even better, and just flip it with authority, but carefully. I'm gonna take this up. I'm gonna rotate it around. Careful, don't wanna burn yourself like I just did. <laughs> Okay, and look at that. So make sure it's set stable on here. Just like that. And back in the oven it goes. Excited. All right, the moment of truth. Here it is. Carefully. Oh yes, here it is. Look at that. I'm gonna take it over on the counter. It looks great. So uh, I remember that little hole. I had a little hole over here, so there was a little bit of a blemish. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, um, there's a little bit of a blemish over here. But it ain't the end of the world right there. It's not bad, because so, you want to try to avoid that, because basically liquid comes out and it doesn't come out evenly. But again, not the end of the world. And this is, you can see how much uh, grease and oil from the duck is rendered out and that's why I, I also recommend that if it's a first time roasting or if you have a, a large roasting pan that's uh, with a higher rim to use that. So let me uh, put this on a on a plate right now because I have to uh, I'm gonna have to let this cool so I can handle it by the skewer here carefully Put this right on the plate. 
everything is very super super hot so be very careful and uh, don't be alarmed when it does cool after it cools it will start to become a little wrinkly totally normal it's okay it's gonna taste great <music>
So it's still kind of the juices and the oils are coming out, but it's much better. Again, look for where the socket is. You can hear that crackling. Just cut it right there. And there you go. You got this beautiful drumstick here. Now the drumsticks, you can actually cut these as well, or you could just leave them alone. Now the way you handle this after that, the way you cut this, is that this is the, uh, the thigh bone of the drumstick. And you, again, you, you cut where the fat line is, find the joint, and you cut that. Cut that in half like that. And the reason why I'm jamming this, and you know, you could use a cloth on top of that or you can use some padding if you're afraid of hurting your hands. But the, re way, the reason why I do that is so it doesn't splash all over the place. This is the back of the, uh, of the piece. And this actually, for me, this is the most delicious piece. I love this piece. Cut it right down the middle, just like that. And then you cut it into pieces that and that's just ready to serve on a plate you can see and then you've got a whole breast piece here and then the other side of the breast which is a little bit bony but you know you know call me Chinese but I kind of like that that s section so I'm going to cut this sort of almost in half and this is where that thin bone is I'm just going to Give it a couple cuts. This is where the, the uh, shears come in really handy if you have them. And this, again, some of the aromatics fell out. I'll put those aside, right? And then this is where it comes in handy. And cut these just like that. And you can see it's a little splash if you do that, which is why I don't like usually don't try not to do that. And these have bones in them, more bones. Now this is a pure breast piece. This is just about all meat. You can actually just cut this bone out and have completely boneless uh, piece of duck. So I, what I do is I cut the skin, get to the bone, just give it a little tap. Cut the skin, get to the bone, a little tap. And repeat. Because you don't want the skin to fall off if you just go smashing. Through. Well, I don't want the skin to fall off. Well, it's more like I don't want to make a mess. Oh. And, uh, you know, because it'll splash all over the place. It'll splash on my apron. It'll splash. I mean, I got to clean everything up. So that's right. why I really don't do it. But you got, look at that. Look at that. You got a beautiful breast piece here. You got this beautiful piece. Now, if you could serve this whole, like I said, or you could, or you could cut it. Same thing. Cut this piece off like this. Cut it, hit the bone, and this one you're going to have to give it a more firmer because this is a, this is a harder bone, but it's cooked, so you just, get it, you just get it until, you know, you get firmly on the bone, and you give it a good tap, like that. Same thing, hit the bone, tap. Now, you've got that, and the same thing with your drumstick. Hit it to the bone. Once you're firmly on the bone, give it a, a, a firm, solid tap, like that. Usually about three pieces. And there you have it, half a duck. And then you just put it on the plate and let everybody have at it. Maybe that's the best way. But here you go, Cantonese roast duck, just for you at home. Oh boy, I've got rice, I've got duck, I've got vegetable. And a duck leg. So I'm gonna prepare this. A little rice. This is the real deal. So good. Excuse me. Mm. Wow. 
So good. That's how you do it, folks. Cantonese roast duck. And at home, it's doable. You can do it. It may not be the easiest, but it's worth the effort, especially if you can't get it. Maybe I should be a little bit more humble, but I think you'll get it pretty close to the restaurant, if not better. Enjoy, folks. Okay, so let's set up the shot for when you're cutting it. Right at home. At home, easy. 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 Yes. Also, Daddy, I can't believe you said it was easy. <laughs> Another shot of me saying enjoy. Mm.